The symptoms can be rather nonspecific in that sometimes you just can have some back pain or chest pain or a little bit of shortness of breath. Right. You can have fever or fatigue. A lot of the symptoms actually can be seen in many different illnesses and it's, it's a little more difficult to make that diagnosis. Right. Usually, with, just like most other disease processes, the first step is seeing your physician and getting a detailed history and physical from that physician. And if there's concern for mesothelioma at that point, further studies are ordered. Usually the initial study is a chest x-ray and sometimes pulmonary function test as well as other lab work. If these studies come back abnormal, you occasionally will need a more definitive, a more definitive study right. like a CAT scan or an MRI of the chest to look for more detail of the pleura. All of these studies just tell you that something's wrong but don't give you the definitive diagnosis. To actually get the diagnosis, you have to go to the next step, which is get a little sample of the tissue and to get a biopsy of the tissue. The way you do that, there's several different routes you can take. One of the routes is a bronchoscopy, where you actually put a scope down into your lungs and you can get a sample of the tissue th through the edge of the lung into the pleura. The other option is a thoracoscopy, where you actually put a like a telescope device down into your chest through a small incision in the upper part of your chest and you can take a sample of the tissue that way. Well on the x-ray there's a it's just a chest x-ray and you can see the white shadow in the middle is your heart and on each side the dark structures are your lungs and on the left lung there's a big white structure that bows in from the outside and that says that there's a large mass and from the way it looks and where it's adjacent to the ex exterior side of the lung, it means it's a pleural-based mass, and the pleural-based mass is where mesotheliomas occur. This would tell you that there is something in your chest, but doesn't tell you what it is or anything else. It does tell you a little bit of the location, but there needs to be further tests or studies to determine exactly what it is. The procedures are all minor in nature. The, they most of them require local anesthetic and not necessarily general anesthesia. There is mild discomfort that goes along with it, but the recovery time from all the procedures is very minimal. So after you get a biopsy, you send the tissue to a pathologist, another specialized doctor who looks solely at um, tissue samples. And usually they can look under a microscope at the samples and tell what kind of tumor it is by looking at what kind of cells. Sometimes they need to do special staining, sending out for electron microscopy or other special stains, antibody stains and other special agents that help make a more definitive diagnosis of the actual cell type. One of the more specific symptoms that you can get is an actual pleural effusion which is accumulation of the fluid between the pleura and the lung in that, in that space and that is a more Pleural fusions occur in different disease processes, but it's more sensitive and more worrisome for the diagnosis of mesothelioma. You can place a needle into that space in doing a procedure called a thoracentesis. And that's, you numb up the skin and numb up the tissues underneath the skin and place a small needle into that space and drain the fluid out. And you can drain all of the fluid out. This is an image of a lung that has been removed from a patient who had malignant mesothelioma. There's a white fibrous tissue that surrounds the lung, which is the cancer cells of the mesothelioma. The lung itself is studded with small fiber deposits and is very diseased as well. But the malignancy is that thick rind of white tissue that surrounds the overall diseased lung.